Hello, I am Poppy Cooks and I am the potato queen of the internet and I'm going to show you how to make delicious, miraculous, beautiful hash browns baby. I don't know why it's a baby, but hash browns. <laughs> Say, that little trick I did that was first time and normally I'm quite rubbish <gasps> did it again yes watch me go right back onto hash browns we're gonna get some Maris Piper potatoes if you are in the US of A it would be an Idaho or a russet potato but we're gonna be using a Maris Piper this is because they've got a lovely starch content means they're fluffy they get nice and golden and crispy and it's kind of ideal for what we're going to be doing which I'll tell you more about. So get them peeled. I have got three here. And they're about medium size. It's just fit in the palm of my hand. Now, I will be honest with you, I have had trouble with hash browns in the past. Um, I have tried to perfect them and I think this is, this is the most perfect that I've got them out of trial and error and testing. I've done just grated. We've done clarified butter and grated. I've done just mashed potato. And I found that because I love this one particular kind of hash brown, which is like, if you know what I mean, golden, we're loving it, clowns, big purple people, hamburglar, probably a bit too specific, but that hash brown is one of my favorite things. And I love eating it at breakfast time. It's the only reason I go for a breakfast if I'm going to that particular place. The rest of it, not bothered by, but that hash brown is delicious. And what I found is that it's kind of like, it's like grated, but also cubed, but also mash. And so that's kind of what I've combined. I don't know the secret to it, but they do something very good to that hash brown. And actually, weirdly, um, way back when, in lockdown, I did... You know when they put it out on like their Twitter of like, this is our recipe. I'm, I'm talking about them like it's some like loose, illustrious, like it's like Voldemort, he who cannot be named, but I don't know why. Here we are. Anyway, they put it out on their Twitter. Here's our recipe. And it was like one potato, one egg. It's not. It definitely is not their recipe. But I did it. I recreated it. It looks like the hash brown that we're talking about, you know, the shape and everything. And like the sun picked it up. The newspaper, The Sun, picked it up and I was in, you know, on Snapchat and they got the little news bits. I was all in that, me, with the, with the hash brown. And that's when I was a bit like, oh, this is quite fun. I'd literally done about five videos on TikTok and this was one of them. Um, and Peter, yeah, The Sun picked it up. I couldn't believe it. I had a call from The Sun. Can we interview you about your hash brown that you've made? And I was like, if you really want to, sweet, but it's not that interesting. It's an egg and a potato. But here we are. Back at it again, back at it with a delicious hash brown. Anyway, less of me talking. I have got the potatoes peeled. We're going to just half them. And then they're gonna go into cold salted water and we're gonna boil them. Into a pan, just cover them with some water and some fine salt as well. So you wanna make sure that your water is seasoned heavily with some salt and then we're gonna leave these to parboil. You still want a little bit of bite to them um, but we're gonna cube up some of them and then mash the rest so it's finding that in between it's gonna be once they come up to the boil probably around 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll poke them and see how they're going so I think hash brown deserves a little bit of extra flavor a little bit of frunion frunion onion frunion what's frunion Onions are crisp in the US, isn't it a Funyun? Anyway, for the onion, cube it up and then we're gonna fry it off to get a little bit of that extra golden, delicious flavor in there. Very savory. Why can't I peel this? This is a hard onion. So to get a nice cube on your onion, we want it fairly small because we don't want there to be too much mouthfeel. So I'm going to cut through the onion horizontally um, so I've sliced it in half, then in horizontal layers. Uh, the best way to do this is bring this right to the end of your chopping board so your hand can stay off of the chopping board. Because if you have it here, you haven't, you're you going to make a very thick slice. So if it's here, you can make nice thin slices. And this is probably about half a centimetre. 
Using the claw method, make sure your hands, like fingertips are on top and it's secure. And then nice, sharp knife just through almost to the end of the root of the onion. Take that out. And then we're going to do maybe one or two more of those. Now, it feels like people always be like, it's pointless because there's layers to an onion anyway. There is layers, but if you just chop down just um, from the top to the bottom this way, you end up with chunky bits on the side, which we don't want that. We want lovely little cubes all the way through. So now I flipped the onion so that the, the bottom is facing away from me. I don't know how to describe this best. And then I'm using the tip of the knife to make little cuts all the way down, not hitting the root just before. You can see there's already little cubes kind of starting to come out, well, irregular cubes, but we'll use them anyway. And then turn it again and then you slice through. And you get these lovely little almost cubes. They're like natural cubes, I suppose. And that's the kind of size that we're looking for inside the hash brown, because they're going to cook down a little bit, but you don't want them too large and uneven, otherwise you'll get one mouthful that's just onion. That, if you wanted to, could go in a stock or a soup or into the compost, which is where it's going. Lovely. They look well nice. Done a good job with that. I'm going to fry off the onions with a little bit of olive oil on like a medium heat. Grab these. Drain these off. Again, if you're doing this just at home, just do it over the sink, it's fine. But I'm trying to show, oh. Hee hee. Once you have drained your delicious potatoes, you're gonna pick the ones that are still kind of holding their shape. You're gonna grab them out. Everything else we're gonna mash up. So about two thirds of it, we're gonna cube up. Really hot, be careful. And once they're cool enough to, you know, actually handle, you can get them chopping. So I'm going to get a fork and I'm going to go for it. I ain't got time to wait around for no cool potatoes. We're going straight in. So we're going to make kind of half centimetre, I say cubes, it's a rough, a rough sort of cube shape. So you just get that texture, a little bit of texture in there. I find that grating, sometimes you end up with quite chunky raw bits of potato. So these are kind of half cooked, which just means that you're not gonna have raw chunks, but you are gonna get that texture in there, which is what we're looking for. It does feel strange cutting up cooked potato. So you said just cutting up raw potato. So it doesn't matter if it gets a bit messy, it's fine, because the rest of it we are gonna mash anyway. So if there are bits of like mash that are happening on the chopping board, don't you worry about it, it's all good. It's all going into the same thing and it's all going into the same cake hole. It's just gonna be delicious. Dip, dip, dip. It, it is easier if you leave them to cool, but I honestly can't wait any longer for a hash brown. So you can see the kind of cubes that are happening here. That is the chopped potato. Now we need a little bit of mash, so gonna get another little bowl. Actually, you know what? I can use the pan that we cooked these potatoes in. So I've got about a third of the potatoes that are left. And if you've seen any of my other videos before, I love a very, very smooth mash. But for this recipe, we don't need that. We just need a binding mash. This is what our chopped bits of potato are gonna go into. So I'm just gonna use a fork and just make a smooth-esque mashed potato. I'm thinking about saving up on the washing up, but I think I'm gonna get this into a bowl so you guys can actually see it properly in some glass so that you can see the combination that's happening and how everything's combining. You can see this is proper fluffy, delicious mash as well, actually. It's nice and pale. You kind of want your mash to look pale. Like I said, this is what's going to really help us bind those kind of hash brown patties, I suppose, together. We've got our lovely mash, and then we're going to add in... 
around a tablespoon of corn flour. It's like one to two tablespoons. Just see how the texture goes. If you need a little bit more, add a little bit more into there. We've got our lovely caramelised onion. And we're going to season it up as well with plenty of salt and pepper. Good hefty pinch. And where's my peps? Pepper. At this point, if you wanted to, you could add in other flavours. You could do a little bit of garlic granule, paprika, cumin, coriander, curry powder, chilli, anything you kind of wanted to. And we're also going to get these kind of chunky cubes. I mean, they're just like roughly chopped potato bits. As long as they're not too massive, you want to be able to kind of imagine what they'd be like if you were like eating them. You don't want them to be huge. Some of them will turn into the mash and just kind of get incorporated, but that's why we do about two thirds cubes and a third mash. And then just mix it all together. I think for this mixture, that one tablespoon of corn flour is going to be fine because it looks like it's becoming sort of a dough already. If it's very um, wet, then you can get a little bit more corn flour in. So you can see there's still a texture in there as well, which is great. And I mean, why am I doing that with my finger? We can try a little bit. There's nothing in here that you can't eat. Bit more pepper. Onion's delicious. Final mix, and then we're gonna get them all molded up. This is the fun part. This is where you can get a bit mucky, a bit dirty, a bit down and grubby with your spuds. It's a bit like Play-Doh. And you can make any kind of shape you like. I am going for that iconic one. Um, so it's a little bit like overly, isn't it? But I might do some um, triangle ones as well, actually, because they always look quite good. So I think you're going to get around six hash browns out of this. On average, if you want to be particular, you can absolutely weigh it out and do everything, you know, perfect. But I've never been that kind of girl. I just want them how I want them. I want them the way they are. I want them au natural. So I'm going for this sort of shape to begin with. And you just want to make sure that you're kind of evening around the edges so that one bit isn't a lot thinner than the other. Otherwise, that's going to catch a little bit more and colour more quickly. You don't want one end being burnt and the other one not even cooked yet. So I'm just kind of using, using my little, what's that finger, ring finger, to like mould it into position. I don't know if this is a, an actual technique that people use, I doubt it, but it's what happens, it helps me. So you kind of get this nice curve. Maybe you could do that one, or that one as well, but you get a nice curve as you go around. Yeah, it's lovely. It's quite a chunky, quite a chunky ash brown, but we like it. And that goes on to a uh, lined baking tray. And you just continue till you've got them all done. And then we're going to leave them in the fridge for a little bit to set up. And then we can start eating them. Ha, ha, ha. So once you've got them all made into shapes, I mean, I've actually done five here, but these are quite hefty. So I've got a little, a little tater tot here on the side. A little tater tot, that's what the Americans have in it, a little tater tot basically a hash brown made into a cylinder. Oh no, I've broken it. Anyway, they're going to go into the fridge and leave them to set for around half an hour. I mean, the longer the better really, but half an hour will do, will do the job. Um, so again, excuse me whilst I back up um, backwards, because if I turn around, you will see my um, Not because I haven't got trousers on, it's just I've got shorts on, it's a really hot day. And yeah, anyway. Oh, here we go. Sorry, one second. Cycling shorts probably isn't the best thing to have in the kitchen, but it is so hot. Anyway, so after about an hour, we've got our beautiful hash browns. They're set up, they've been in the fridge, they're a little bit harder now, which means, you know, we can be a little bit rougher with them because they're going to go into hot oil. Now, if you have a deep fat fryer or a happy to deep fat fry, then you can deep fat fry these and they'll get super golden all the way around and really delicious and it's a fairly simple way to cook them. But if you don't, we're actually going to do them in a pan and it's shallow frying, but in quite a lot of oil. So it feels, you know, more 
natural to do at home. They don't really work in the oven, I'll be honest with you. I have tried it, but they just go a little bit dry. Um, so we need that kind of fat contact of having that lovely fat. So we're just using a vegetable oil, but you can use whatever kind of oil you like. It's got like a nice high smoking point. And I've got it into a large frying pan and it's about a quarter of the way up the pan. So you've got a nice layer. So it's probably a couple of centimetres really, almost, I don't know. Can't really tell the height of it, but you want about half of the hash brown to be covered in oil when you're frying so that when you flip it, you don't get a little ring of uncooked hash brown. It's all completely golden all the way around. So I'm getting this up to a nice high temperature. Not smoking or anything, nice and hot. So when you actually add that hash brown into the pan, it starts to bubble and cook straight away, which means it gets a nice solid outer shell so it doesn't fall apart. Because we are using, it's, you know, it's a mashed potato hash brown. Uh, if you fry mash, it can kind of like splatter and just go everywhere. Hence, we have rested it for about an hour so it's nice and solid and why we wanna get our fat nice and hot. I've got the pan on almost the highest heat that it goes. And as soon as we add our hash browns in, the temperature's just gonna drop right down because these are cold and the oil will be trying to work up the heat again. So we can get it on quite hot here. And I'm gonna do it in batches as well because I don't wanna overcrowd the pan and bring the temperature all the way down that they don't cook. And I don't know if I've told you this today, but it is an absolutely scorching hot day. <sighs> sweating, absolutely sweating. But it's lovely. Love a little hash brown. And what's great, hash browns, you can put them in your breakfast. You can have them on a burger if you really want it. You could have them as a little side instead of some fries. I never have, but that would be delicious. Maybe you could make fry hash browns. Could you cut them into... Another, I was thinking actually, if you cut them into like chip shapes or fry shapes, they'd be blooming delicious little... Someone's definitely done that before, surely. Okay, pan is nice and hot. I can feel there's a nice bit of heat radiating off that lovely fat. And it's time to get the hashy babies in here. Okay, I'm gonna go for these kind of uh, little shapes, these little ovals. And when you're putting anything into a pan with oil, make sure you kind of lay it away from you because you don't want it to splash back. No one likes a splash back. Lay it away. See, like, it flopped that way. Of course, if you want to use a utensil to do this bit. I'm just, live on the edge, me. You can see the oil is quite high, so it is about half, it's covering about half of the hash brown. We don't want them floating in it, in the pan. We just want them to sit, touching the base of the pan, but that oil almost, almost all the way around them. Delicious. Please, the audacity of these hash browns to look this good and crispy and delicious. I need to, I just, I just, I feel like you can just eat this on their own. You don't need a dip, we don't need a sauce, we don't need a breakfast, we just need a glorious hash brown. Okay, I want the crunch, because there is serious crunch. It is, like, poetically. That is just the ultimate hash brown. It's super fluffy inside, but you've got those chunks of delicious kind of pillowy potato. And then the onion with loads of flavor. It's seasoned up to the high heavens. I mean, perfect breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Beautiful, delicious hash browns. Honestly, if you just love potatoes as much as I do, then please do like and subscribe. And maybe eventually I'll get around to doing something that isn't potatoes, but at the minute, we're all about the spuds here on the Poppy Cooks YouTube channel. So get involved. It's bloody delicious, that.